No, I mean, I, I think that stuff is kind of myth. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. But I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be on the cover. After quarterbacks Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes defied the odds of falling victim to the Madden curse, we all thought that it was over and broken, but we may have been mistaken. It's clear that Christian McCaffrey has his beliefs on the curse, but it is unclear if Kyle Shanahan and 49ers fans believe the same after their beloved star running back has been sidelined with injury to start the 2024 season. Even further, the San Francisco 49ers were hit hard by injuries to many of their star players, which begs the question, as the Madden curse returned? Now, like McCaffrey, some of us don't believe in curses, but ever since he appeared on the cover of the famous video game, there's been some rather strange things that have been happening, and in order to fully understand just how bad it is, we'll look back on the history of the game, and first, we'll start off with CMC. Everyone knows that Christian McCaffrey isn't just a star. He's one of the most electrifying and versatile players in the NFL. Since being drafted eighth overall in 2017, McCaffrey has consistently redefined what it means to be a running back in the modern game. As a true dual threat weapon, he's dominated both on the ground and through the air, cementing himself as one of the league's elite overall talents. It was only a matter of time before he graced the coveted cover of Madden, an iconic honor reserved for football's final. In 2023, McCaffrey had his best season yet, leading the league with his 21 total touchdowns and over 2,000 scrimmage yards, earning him the NFL Offensive Player of the Year award. And after a superb playoff run that saw his 49ers fall just short of a title in Super Bowl 58, McCaffrey got the call from EA Sports to be on the cover of Madden 25, joining the prestigious club of so many legends of the game. However, as most of us know, being on the Madden cover on often comes with a catch. Since Garrison Hurst's injury in 1998, just months after being named as the cover athlete, so many players in the 26 years since have fallen victim to the Madden curse. Simply put, once a player appears on the cover of pro football's famous video game, that player can expect to suffer either serious injury or just a fatal downturn in performance. The Madden curse has become a staple of NFL folklore in the 21st century, with players frequently asked whether they believe and its eerie reputation. So when Christian McCaffrey was announced as the cover athlete before the season, it was only natural that he be posed the same question. Unsurprisingly, McCaffrey laughed it off. He seemed more honored than concerned, embracing the prestige of the moment. But while McCaffrey brushed it off, many superstitious 49ers fans felt a twinge of unease. And as it turns out, they may have had a point all along. Right around the 2024 preseason, McCaffrey suffered a calf and Achilles injury, which derailed his preparation operations for the season, ruling him out of the preseason at least. While some on the 49ers staff had been hopeful that CMC would be ready to go by week one, turns out that the injury was more serious than first thought. By week four, McCaffrey had yet to suit up for the 49ers. In the last week of September, he traveled to Germany to see a specialist, searching for solutions and answers, but in disappointment, the specialist confirmed the worst fears that McCaffrey won't be returning to action for a few more months at the very least. As elite, as McCaffrey is, the 49ers are arguably, on paper, the team in the NFL best equipped to miss a star running back given how loaded the rest of their offense is. But sadly, for Niner fans, the injury woes on this roster did not end with their Madden cover star. George Kittle, who has been a pillar for the team since his arrival, missed Week 3's divisional matchup against the LA Rams with a bad hamstring. Kittle is one of the league's very best tight ends, both as a receiving option and as a blocker, and is his absence is felt strongly when he's missed games in recent seasons. The same can be said for Debo Samuel, another core weapon in Kyle Shanahan's offense. Samuel had a great performance in Week 2, despite a loss to the Minnesota Vikings, with his 110 yards on eight receptions leading the team on the day. In the previous 2023 season, Debo recorded 12 total touchdowns, second on the roster only to, who else, Christian McCaffrey, and he's found a vital place in San Francisco as a gadget receiver who also contributes significantly in the running game. Samuel scored 16 rushing touchdowns between 2021 and 2023, unheard of for a receiver, and was expected to carry on that form in the 2024 season. However, Debo also suffered an injury after Week 2, keeping him from playing in Week 3, taking away another of Brock Purdy's favorite weapons. This meant that Purdy led his team into LA, missing three of the core members of an offense that performed so well the year 
year before, having to make do with a makeshift supporting cast for a tough divisional game. Whether the Madden curse can impact an entire organization is up for debate, but if it can, the 49ers seem to be feeling its effects in full force at the time. Despite that, Brock Purdy stepped up in a big way during the absence of McCaffrey, Kittle, and Samuel. Purdy delivered an impressive performance, throwing three touchdowns, zero interceptions, and racking up 292 passing yards. All three touchdowns were hauled in by Jawan Jennings, who had a breakout performance, notching 175 yards on 11 catches. Jennings made a strong case that the 49ers offense could still thrive even without their star trio on the field, as did Jordan Mason, who has been solid across his three starts at running back, averaging nearly 115 scrimmage yards against the Jets, Vikings, and Rams. Mason has shot up the depth chart himself, not just due to CMC's absence, but also the long-term injury to previous running back two Elijah Mitchell, who is out for the season himself. But despite the best efforts of Jennings and Mason, the 49ers still fell short against the Rams, losing a pulsating matchup 27-24 despite holding a 14-point lead during the third quarter. Obviously, we can't prove that the Niners would have won this one for sure. Don't you think the outcome of this one would be different with Debo, Kittle, and the Madden cover athlete on the field? Things have threatened to get even worse for Kyle Shanahan's squad, this time on the defensive side of the ball, with core players, defensive end Nick Bosa and cornerback Charvarius Ward getting banged up and were on the injury report. They did make the field in the Rams game, but they were questionable leading up to it. These two were able to play through the pain, but it wasn't the case for defensive tackle Javon Hargrave. Hargrave was a vital anchor to this defensive front, but he too got hurt, having torn his triceps in another brutal blow to the team. Again, if Boza and Ward were at 100% and Hargrave had finished that game, maybe the Niners aren't 1-2 and two right now. But of course, they are. And to cap all of this off, Brock Purdy himself was said to be dealing with a back issue and was being monitored day to day for the week. 49ers fans everywhere must be wondering what they've done to deserve this level of bad luck right at the time when their Super Bowl window remains slivered open. It's almost as if they're cursed. When fully healthy, the 49ers roster is the best in the NFC and possibly the very best in the entire NFL. However, the plethora of injury problems is impossible for any team to deal with. This has all been despite the best efforts of Brock Purdy, who has still been one of the best passers in the league despite missing three of his best four offensive weapons on paper, with only Brandon Ayuk remaining healthy from the previous season's starters at the skill positions. Many argued in 2023 that Purdy was merely a system QB, carried by his star-studded teammates. But so far, his numbers without them have been just as good as last year, if not better. Having said that, I imagine Purdy would still rather have Debo, Kittle, and McCaffrey healthy. So, are the 49ers truly cursed? And does the infamous Madden curse really exist? Well, there's no denying that several high-profile players have suffered serious setbacks after gracing the cover of Madden, one of the earliest and most famous cases happened to another 49er, Garrison Hurst, who was dealt a devastating injury during the 1999 divisional round against Atlanta. Hurst's injury was so severe that it sidelined him for two full seasons, while he made a triumphant return in 2001. Rushing for 1,200 yards, losing two prime years of his career, made him a textbook example of a potential victim of the curse, if you believe in it. And the hits didn't stop there. Throughout the 2000s, the so-called Madden curse seemed to strike again and again. Take Dante Culpepper, for example. After a stellar 2000 season where he threw for nearly 4,000 yards and 33 touchdowns, the Minnesota Vikings quarterback earned the coveted Madden cover spot. But following his appearance, Culpepper's production plummeted. His touchdown total was cut in half, and he managed only four wins in the 2001 season, a stark contrast to his prior dominance. The following year, there was Marshall Falk, who was the three-time reigning offensive player of the year before appearing on the Madden 2002 cover. Falk would suffer the first major injury of his career, missing six games and failing to top 1,000 yards as a result. In the short term, it can be argued that Falk was cursed, but he did make the Hall of Fame and rush for over 12,000 career yards, so it's hard to call him a victim on the whole. The year after Falk, Falcons quarterback Michael Vick was named on the cover as the league positioned the dynamic and thrilling Vick to be the new face of the league going forward. However, Vick played just five games that season after suffering a fractured fibula, derailing both his and his team's season in 2003. Vick's first major career setback also coincided with the virtual Vick becoming the most legendary player in Madden 
in history, with Matt in 2004 Mike Vick being famously impossible to defend against. As we all know, Vick's career took a much more serious dark turn in 2007 as he was jailed for his involvement in a dogfighting ring, which is surely beyond the scope of a video game curse. As the decade rolled on, the victims of the curse kept on coming. While the likes of Culpepper did rebound briefly, years on from the cover appearance, both Sean Alexander and Vince Young saw their careers disintegrate very quickly after their own appearances on the cover. Alexander was on the cover of Madden 07 following a phenomenal 1,880-yard 27-touchdown campaign, which earned him the MVP award that year. At that point, Alexander was right at the top of the football world, but within three years, he was out of the league entirely, having not matched that 1,880 total in three seasons combined. As for Vince Young, he also didn't last much longer than his Madden 08 cover appearance, having a disappointing injury-riddled few seasons in Tennessee before hanging them up for good in 2011. In recent years, the power of the Madden curse seems to have weakened, if not disappeared entirely. A prime example is Lions legend Calvin Johnson, who appeared on the Madden 13 cover. Rather than succumbing to the curse, Johnson shattered records, setting the single-season mark for receiving yards with 1,964. If there was any curse, Johnson clearly didn't get the memo, as he was busy making history. Then there are two players who seem downright immune, Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. Brady, who finally appeared on Madden 18 at age 40, won MVP that season and made yet another Super Bowl run, effectively mocking the curse. Mahomes, after gracing the Madden 20 cover, followed his MVP season with the Super Bowl victory and has only gotten better since. Both shared the cover of Madden 22, putting even more doubt on the idea of a curse, until Christian McCaffrey was named this year's cover star and the questions resurfaced. Has the curse returned? With the 49ers battling a wave of injuries in the early part of the 2024 season, including Christian McCaffrey, the whispers about the curse are louder than ever. The Niners still have a strong chance to compete, but early setbacks have already jeopardized their run for an NFC one seed. Will McCaffrey and the 49ers bounce back, or is the Madden curse making a comeback? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you want more thrilling content like this, stick with the Halftime Show.